Oh. <laughs> this is more for commercial, residential, 120, but it works for, for AC, DC. What you've got here, that's continuity. That's your ohm signal. That's amperage. You're not really gonna use that right now for your bike. Maybe, it's like chopsticks here. There you go. Super rad, crazy bright, rigid, uh, which we do have on the website. Tech tip of the day. I'm not ready. Let's get her in there in the groove. Yeah, you can use a wider one. Wider one may work better. What are you cooking here? So you got the Reynolds wrap out. Oh you know? yeah, I'm about Ooh, to be cooking up bacon? some bacon in a fresh Zuma case. So obviously, well, for the head, plenty head. head and cylinder. I don't know why I just said that. And then the stage six crank. Ooh, fancy. Do you got straight bars, bro? Straight bars, dog. It, yeah, it's it's a T-top model, and it's got the 14-pound springs. Brandon? Yes. You don't even own the vehicle. I do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> hey, hey. Wait, wait. What's up? Interesting looking tail light. Like that? Mm. So this is uh, Kevin Gearhart Spree. Probably go over it at some point, I would assume. It's a pretty cool bike when it's all done. But just kind of want to give you guys just a little quick basic rundown on how to use a multimeter like this. There's a lot of different types. This is more for commercial, residential, 120, but it works for, for AC, DC. What you've got here, that's continuity. That's your ohm signal. That's amperage. You're not really going to use that right now for your bike. This is your voltage. So we'll start with just a basic theory of what continuity is. And some some gauge, some are gonna beep, some are gonna give you a value, um, but it's measuring resistance from this wire to this wire. For instance, this this is really valuable to have, but let's say you have a bike and you don't know if your, your motor's grounded, don't know if you have good mo ground on your motor. You can basically connect one wire to your ground and one to your motor, see that it's got a good ground. Like I said, some are gonna beep, um, some are going to beep and some are going to give you a value. So this is actually reading 5 ohm. So there is some resistance between the, the ground and the motor, but you've got buildup on the cases and whatnot and, and the resistance of your wire. So um, that's continuity. That's really good for checking to see if you're up here in the front, you're wiring your bike and you want to, um, for instance, let's say you wanted to find one of these wires on your fuel sensor because you wanted to run. Well, that just it just fell right out of there. Probably not used on this, but let's say you wanted to find uh, your, say you have five green wires up there, you have five green wires back here, you've got 10. You wanna find which one's which. You could, doesn't have to be a ground. All it's doing is finding out, locating a wire or a, I guess a metal surface or conductor from one point to another. So got wires back here, you have them up here. You can just go back and forth and back and forth until you find the two that are connected together. So really valuable for that, for tracing wires out and whatnot. Um, so this bike we're diagnosing, uh, also you can check light bulbs with it as well. Just put it between the two terminals like so, maybe it's like chopsticks here. There you go. So you can tell that filament's good because, um, because it beeps showing you have continuity. For instance, this bike, when I turn the light on, squeeze the brake lever, the, the brake light does not come on. So first off, I check the bulb, bulb's good. Come up here and put my two wires on my brake switch here. So yeah, see his brake switch is on all the time. It should disconnect and connect when I'm doing this and it's on all the time. Really nice for diagnosing things, for finding um, where the issue is. You know, if you've got a coil and maybe you're afraid of you're not getting, you're not getting a spark, pop your green wire off your coil here, 
plug it in the, into the green wire to your ground shows you that, that you have continuity to your ground. So voltage is pretty straightforward as well. This is good. We have a video on it as well, checking your charging system. This bike's been sitting for a bit. So we sitting right here at 11 volts. Most of these gauges is not gonna matter. So it should say negative. See how it says negative there. If you have the terminals back and forward backwards, it doesn't matter. But this is really good. Let's say uh, alligator clamps are really nice as well. You could clip this guy right in here in the ground. And then, you know, he's got a glass fuse over here. You could check one side of the fuse. Then you could check the other side of the fuse to make sure your fuse is working. You know, most of your fuses are gonna have, the plastic type are gonna have like a opening on the top so you can actually touch the metal on both sides to see if they're working. Yeah, just a quick little rundown on how you use this. Voltage is really good. You can find out where your ignition wire is up here. You wanna wire in a headlight, like we've got this nifty little super rad, crazy bright, rigid, uh, which we do have on the website. Um, these actually use GoPro mounts, which is really, really cool. But uh, yeah, super bright. You wanna run a headlight, you wanna run the switches and whatnot, you're definitely gonna need some type of meter if you're not familiar with the circuitry of the switch that you're putting on. Let's say you have a you know stage six switch with a bunch of buttons, this is really nice to have. But yeah, there's my electrician tech, tech tip of the, of the morning. Okay. Okay, I just have to scrub me on just take a peek at him. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me know. I'm good. Tech tip of the day! I'm not ready. You knew I was coming. You told me you were ready. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, I got a tech tip of the day. Right. So, what's your tech, tech tip? tip? It's an day. actual tech tip today. It's always an actual tech tip. Take your piston ring. Tell me what you're doing. Tell people what you're gonna you... put piston rings on without breaking them. You're gonna put piston rings Sometimes on. Sometimes they're really tight. Well, shouldn't this be very like a given? Yeah. Okay. So you get it on there. You don't even really need it for these ones. But I'll show you. Sometimes they can get stuck. So it's kind of stuck. So you take your feeler gauge and you stick it in there. Get her in there in the groove. Yeah, you can use a wider one. Wider one may work better. See? And then you work it around to the edge. Boom. And you just pop right in. And you take your top one. This works sometimes it's uh more needed than others. These top ones top ones are a little bit harder. The chrome ones. So you kind of start working it in there. And then you just spin it around. Boom. Oh, not quite in there. There you go. <clears throat> and then line it up with a pin. And then you put it in. Uh, sometimes sometimes they can be tricky. These ones go on pretty easily, but uh, on bigger pistons or uh, thicker rings, they can be tricky. Okay. And then you line them up with that line pin. Up, and then you just there. pop it in. Yeah, but the feeler gauge helps. Yeah, it works with the, like, the big wide ones too. The big wide ones probably work better because they, they bend more. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but uh, on like the big like 120s and 130s, you can kind of work it around like that. Okay. It makes it easier. And it's guaranteed not to break? No, it's not guaranteed. So it's not a guarantee. It's no. just. It's, it's safer. Who taught you this? A uh, uh, buddy who works on older Vespas, like classic scooters. Okay. His name's Woody. And so you, you're not going to bend them or break them doing it this way? Yeah, that or on the really small pistons too or where you have brittle rings mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of work it around where it's not you're not putting a ton of pressure on the rings okay because you're right. just you just you just have the feeler gauge in there and it just kind of slides in between do you have any other tech tips of the day yeah. that's all i got i just thought of this one okay. i remembered this one from a while ago cool thank you yeah. paul thank you what are you cooking here so you got the Reynolds wrap out. Oh know? yeah, I'm about Ooh. to be cooking up bacon? some bacon in a fresh Zuma case so I can uh, drop these fresh bearings in for its new stage six crank.
Exciting. What customer is this? Um. What do you know? I don't know. Hmm. Um, I am pretty sure Paul would know. But so uh, got, he huh? ended up going with a Polini head, the stage six Big Johnny intake. Obviously, well, for the, the head, Polini head. head and cylinder. I don't know why I just said that. And then the stage six crank. Ooh, fancy. Mm hmm. And you too can get this done if you send us their motor. Makes it a lot cheaper on your pocket if we don't have to pull it out of the bike. Yep, yep, yep. Shipping actually isn't too horrible. I mean, it's not the cheapest, but. Cheaper than shipping a bike. Yeah, way cheaper than a bike. And turnaround is actually pretty fast currently. Depends on the time of year you send it to us. See if I can get some heat in here. Get it up there. Ooh. Feels good. <laughs> get some bacon, just set it over there and cook it. Oh, is that thing like completely straight? Ah, uh, they're a little bit. They hard. have a little, little. That, yeah, but that's pretty much straight bars. That yeah. is pretty much straight bars. Yeah. Do you got straight bars, bro? Straight bars, dog. Those are straight bars. Yeah, that's pretty much straight. They're not quite as straight as the other bars. Straight bars. This bike, Zach West has straight bars. Dog. <laughs> yeah. I have a 2009 uh, Porsche F250, and then uh, I have a 2018 Ferrari GT3 RS with the carbon right, package. Do you have any other vehicle? Yeah, yeah, I have several. Do you know which vehicle is this about? The warranty. Because I have several. I'm a collector. Yeah. This was, what is it? Uh, I have a, I have a 2014 uh, Duramax Camaro, Chevrolet, and then I have a, okay. a 2005 F926. What What's that? This, okay, so what about your Camaro? So yeah, how it's, many miles it's, are you on that? It's the Duramax. It has uh, 27,000 miles. Okay, okay, so perfect. So. Okay, so it's the four-wheel drive mo it's the four-wheel drive yes. mo don't talk over me it's the four-wheel drive model okay, so as well so oh, okay. that may change yes, some things so, yep okay, so how many miles are you also will you also verify your zip code sir yes it's nine seven two zero five i have two addresses i also have nine seven two six seven so what is that? What is it? what is again it yeah it's it's a t-top model do you need details on it what is it it's what the it's the code? triple tur it's the triple turbo G seven. How do I pronounce the first name? What's that? My first name? Yes. Um, my nickname or my real name? Your real name. Oh. Your first name. Okay. Are you ready? It's it's uh Brandon. Okay, Brandon. Okay, so Brandon. 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 Okay. Okay. How do they know they're gonna get people like they think? that your warranty is expiring. Oh, what did no I say? Idea. What? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, see here. She's probably trying to look up a four-wheel drive Duramax Camaro right now. <laughs> Are you there? Okay, so thank you for, yes, so okay. thank you for getting this call. So, will you please hold for a line? I will just connect you to a line especially, so. Okay, okay. and this is about the, the warranty on my Duramax uh, four-wheel drive LT, uh, LTZ Camaro, the all-wheel drive one? Is that what this is about? Okay, perfect. Yes, I'd like to have that car warranty. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> the guy has no idea what he's... That sounds great. I think he's a woman. Sounds like a guy. Okay, so... And what is your name? You said your name was Sam, right? Just because I'm, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Good music. Uh... So what do you think I should say now that it's like a T-top version? It's crazy, that's small drone. Sorry, I want to sell mine because I have like the big uh, DJ Phantom or whatever. Yeah. Hello, thank you My name is Sterling. I'm the senior coverage specialist for the Chevrolet. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. Okay, good. And looks like you're in the 2014 Camaro with about 27,000 miles. Is that correct? That's correct. It's maybe 27,000 to 200, 300. I drive every once in a while, but just to... No. Pick up chicks mostly. That's okay. We can use this as a ballpark figure. 
And the reason for the call is because your factory warranties have expired. So oh. this would be the opportunity to purchase the protection back on. Okay. I'm sure you'd like to know what that's going to cover in cost, correct? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, well, we do have to get it approved, which we're not going to require a physical inspection. Mm -hmm. I do have to ask a few qualifying questions over the recorded call just to make sure it's eligible. Okay. Right, so. I'm sure it is. It's a, it's a factory Roush car, but okay. Okay. <laughs> so there's no check engine lights or fluids leaking from it? Uh, no. No fluids. Did you modify anything that would enhance your performance? I have, correct. And I have a, the list in front of me right now, if you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Okay. It's, it's got the S, S23 uh, triple compound turbo setup. And then, okay, um, that, and then I have, uh, it's got the nine injection uh, methanol system and the uh, Tiptronic dual Marlin crawler transfer case kit. And then it has the uh, 3D printed carbon Kevlar wrapped uh, solid state drive shaft center support diff with three discs. And then the pressure plate is a, a south, south bend, eight millimeter, and it's got the 14 pound springs. Brandon? Yes. You don't even own the vehicle. I do. I'm literally looking at it right now. You have now. a 2008 Mercedes, you have a 05 Mercedes, a 2014 Ford Transit, a 09 Mercedes, a 02 Ford Ranger, a 92, I don't even know what that's called, a 07 Silverado. Correct. So again, I can help with something that you own, but I'm not here to waste your time. What are you doing? You're not here to waste my time? You are here to waste my time. Because I own an LLC as well. No, I'm not. It's not hard. They can look up anybody's phone number. It's like public information with what you're insuring. Uh, that's kind of lame. Welcome to the It's club. really sketchy. Yeah, it is. Half yeah. those vehicles I don't even own anymore, though. So, some I had to think. I'm like, do I? Do I own? No, don't own that anymore. You got an effing Ford Ranger, though. I <laughs> <laughs> like the Modlins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the 1500, what did I say, the 14-pound springs? Yeah. I'm not here to waste... The South Bend Clutch, you got that one right. Did he say he wasn't here to waste my time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was fun.